In today's video, I'm playing with macro and I am playing with fire. Okay, so I'll cut the dramatics. What I'm doing today is a bit of an experiment with macro photography using flash, using ambient light, and using a little bit of fiery magic. I basically had this idea of a coffee bean wreathed in fire. Maybe it's to do with the roasting. Maybe it's just to do with the heat of a lovely cup of coffee. I've no idea. Fine, it's not a great concept, but I'm hoping it could be an interesting photo. But I've got a little bean set up already just here, so let's take a look. The coffee bean itself, you can maybe just see, is just stuck to the end of this sort of metal wire that I've looped around as a means of getting it standing up. I've got my camera here, my R5 with a 100mm macro lens on the front. It is locked down on a tripod. If we have a quick look here, you can see the composition I'm going for. We've got that coffee bean, lovely and in focus, nice and close up. I've got it in the bottom third of this vertical frame. Reason being is that I am hoping to have flames coming up here. So I am leaving some room for the fire in this shot. How am I going to create that fire? Well, I do have some lighter fluid and I have a lighter. But let's not be silly with this. This is actual fire we're using. Fire can't be dangerous. F lighter fluid can be dangerous. Putting a light to lighter fluid can be dangerous. So I've made sure to clear the area entirely. I've got water on standby. I've also got a fire extinguisher on standby. And if you're gonna try this, you should have exactly the same things. You cannot take enough precautions with something like this. I don't wanna hear of anyone having any problems, getting burned, causing any damage. And it probably goes without saying that if you do attempt something like this on your own time, then you do so entirely at your own risk. You have been warned. So with the lecture out of the way, let's actually start taking some photos. So I'm starting off by taking a photo of the bean itself, and I'm gonna actually do this by lighting it using my Godox AD100 Pro light. I've got a wireless trigger on my camera, and I'm just gonna be able to hold this light off to the side. Now I'll just get rid of this little box for a moment, and I'll just show you kind of how I'm starting to build up this image. As you saw before, I've got the bean in the lower third of the frame. Currently I'm at f16 and a 40th of a second. And if I just take a shot without this light, we have got pretty much a black frame. I always wanna start off with a black frame of something like this because I now know that this big LED video light I've got lighting me up isn't putting any light on the bean itself. So I know that when I, that when I put light into the scene, I have got complete control over it. So if I start off by taking a quick shot, I want this light coming off from one side, maybe at a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna hold this in place and take that first shot. And we can see that it does light up the bean quite nicely. We've got some lovely texture. We've got some lovely contrast. However, the side of that bean completely falls into darkness. And I don't really want that. I still want the bean to actually kind of stand out a little bit. So that is why I had this leftover white empty bit of packaging. You know what? This is the box for this light. And I'm gonna pop that in next to it. Reason being is that it is a white piece of card. That's gonna reflect back some of this light onto that bean, filling in some of those shadows, stopping it from falling completely into darkness. So let's take that same shot again. And we can see just how much difference that box actually makes. I can bring it in even closer just to bounce even more light. And again, we take that same shot and we filled in so many of those shadows. It's a really cheap and easy way to turn one light into almost two lights just by bouncing that light back into your subject. So I'm already happy with how the bean looks in this shot, so I'm actually just gonna put my light away now. I'm gonna start using some fire. I'm gonna to have to change my camera settings, of course, for this though, because before I've been trying to get a black frame, I've been trying to kill all of the ambient light because I've been exposing my camera for the flash. But the flames, now that's a different light source entirely. That is an ambient light, and we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we're capturing that properly. So what I think I'm gonna to need to do here is slightly decrease my aperture from f16. I'm gonna to go to f8. It's gonna bring in a bit more light, allowing more of those flames to kind of be captured by the camera. So I'm gonna go down to f8, keep my shutter speed at a 40th of a second. I'm gonna take a quick test shot. Again, we're pretty much at blackness here. 
I don't think I need to worry about this light at the moment. But what we're gonna be doing is taking the shot of the fire and then in Photoshop, I'm gonna layer that over the top of the shot we took using the flash. So that does mean that I need to make sure that I'm not moving the camera, but it also means I've only really got one shot with each bean. Because once I've set this one on fire, it's gonna to start to corrode and it's probably gonna move in its position. So I'm not gonna be able to do another shot afterwards. I'll have to start the whole process again. So I'm basically at this point, hoping that my exposure is gonna be good enough, but I can kind of test it just by holding the flame of the lighter up here and taking a quick shot. And I can see that the little flame of that lighter is looking perfectly exposed here. So I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna get what I want. So I'm starting off getting the lighter fluid. Uh, it comes out in tiny little droplets if you don't squeeze the bottle. And that's all I want, one tiny little drop. You don't need much, it's potent stuff. Just a little drop on top of that coffee bean. That's all it needs, really small amount. So I've actually got my camera on a trigger here, so I don't need to touch it. I can just keep on taking these photos. And I'm gonna bring the light to the bean now. Here we go. And up it goes. I'm actually, while that's on, I'm also going to see, maybe I could bring in the light at the same time and light it up like this. That actually does look even better. Maybe I won't need to layer this up in Photoshop at all. Maybe I can just do it like this. And now the bean is starting to fall off his little, his little perch. And we knock it off here into the water below. A different bean. Of course, I've moved it, so I'm gonna have to now slightly adjust my camera position and also my focus. So I'm gonna keep this uh, white uh, box in shot here just because I think I am gonna try and just get that flash uh, bounced in while it's on fire. Maybe I won't need to go to the effort of actually layering things up. It might be enough just by itself in one shot and that would be really good if we can get it in one shot and stop us having to lose a lot of time in Photoshop. So again, a little, little drop, tiny, tiny drops. The flames we're using really are no bigger than just this lighter itself. So, you know, it isn't gonna get out of hand. We keep this nice and out of the way. So I'm gonna get ready with this. I'm gonna to start to get rid of my light. Here we go for another attempt. Okay, that flame's coming in nicely. I'm really hoping that at least one of those shots is going to be good enough to do some work with. So I'm gonna take these over into Lightroom, into Photoshop and see what we can do. Okay, so I've brought these photos over into Lightroom. And as you can see, I've taken a whole range. I've got some when the uh, coffee bean is not on fire and then I've got various ones taken when it is. And it's quite fun to see how it burns and then falls off the little stands that I'd used. But the ones that I've picked out um, are these two that I've marked as five stars. Now, this one is the one that I want to use for the flames. Um, I love how we've got these lovely uh, flames um, coming up. Uh, it, it's perfectly within the frame of the image, whereas, uh, for example, this one, the fire is going all the way up and off the edge of the frame, whereas this one is actually really nicely as part of the image. Only problem that I've got is that the coffee bean is already too burned. It's very charred um, on the outside here. So I'm actually going to blend that with this one, with the bean before I set it on fire. Hopefully as a result then, we're gonna get the best of both worlds. We're gonna get the lovely uh, crisp details of this uncharred bean with that lovely flame. So let's select them both and I'm gonna right click and go edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. So we've opened them as two layers in Photoshop and as you can see, if I turn this one on and off, there is a little bit of movement between the two layers. That's fine, I can align them quite easily. So I'm gonna start off by changing the blending mode to difference. Now this is just going to make the uh, top layer um, a very, as you can see, sort of weird outline thing. It, it allows you to sort of line your layers and when the lines disappear, then it's in the right position. Um, I'm not so great on the exact terminology here, but the problem with God is that um, 
the the shapes and the sizes because it's the position um, nearer to the camera isn't quite exactly the same. So I'm going to have to just sort of do this fairly roughly. Um, and I, to be honest, I think something just like this. I'm lining up mostly with the line in the middle, but this looks okay um, right now if I sort of turn that on and off. That's pretty much in the right spot. So I'm going to turn this now back to normal. And then I'm going to apply to this layer a layer mask. Uh, it's white. White reveals a layer. Black hides it. So if I just press Control and I to invert that layer mask, it's hidden. However, now we can paint with our white uh, brush. Um, I've got a flow of 19%, which is fine. And as we paint on, that will now reveal that top layer of the uh, of the bean of the of the non burnt bean. I'm going to turn the hardness up a little bit and reduce the size. Um, something like this is going to be good, and I'm going to do it fairly roughly just for this. You can see what I'm what I'm doing, um, but it's not going to be uh, the most exact. Uh, of alignments or of masking right now, but I just want you to be able to kind of see what it is that I'm doing. I want to get rid of that little hot spot. Oh no, you know what? I don't because this is the problem we've got. Look, if I turn this on and off, actually it's not aligned with the top because of the way that the other bean has sort of fallen forward. So we then paint with black and simply paint the other layer back in, or rather we erase the, the top layer. And that's fine, so we can do that. Um, swap our colors back, and we paint away some of that blackness, replacing it with the lovely sort of brown bean, as it were. Um, I think as well, this uh, sort of whiteness and some of these little lines on the outside are from this top layer, this as well, so we can just sort of paint those away while we're at it. And what about the um, uh, the spike, the, the wire I was using to hold it up. Can I erase that all the way to the coffee? I sort of can, and that would be good. I'm going to go with a much harder brush, and I'm going to go with a very soft edge, just to kind of paint in around this flame, because that is going to allow it to blend much more naturally. I have seen, however, that we have started to paint over the coffee. So smaller, oops, not this. Uh, painting with black and we're just going to paint that back in until it rejoins. But we do still have this uh, uh, shadow of the uh, uh, of the stand in place so we are going to have to remove that. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to create a new layer uh, merging these ones by holding down command or alt going to layer and then going to merge visible and that's created a new layer on top. I just generally like to maintain my layers underneath just in case I do kind of want to go back and change something. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just grab a, uh, I'm going to press S to bring up my clone stamp tool. And I'm going to take a reading from here. The problem I do have right now is that I've got a very big LED light right above me and it's making it very difficult to see uh, the shadow detail on the screen. So just for a moment, what I'm going to do is turn it off. I am now in darkness. The uh, My camera will keep on auto-focusing, trying to figure out where I am probably. But I can now see much better what I'm doing. And I, as, as you can see, I am simply using the clone stamp tool. I'm taking readings from different parts and just cloning away that part of the... Um, uh, of the stand because at this point I can then get my uh, polygonal lasso tool and I can draw a frame around it and I can then grab my patch tool and I can simply drag it from one side to the other, deselect, go back and we have removed the little stand. It is very very easy to do. Um, I think I'm very pleased with how easy a job that has done. If we turn that off and on, I don't think you'd really notice it was there. But again, it's the sort of thing that I'm doing this very, very quickly. That's taken me just a few minutes. 
If you were doing this yourself, you'd probably want to take a little bit longer just to make sure that it actually does look uh, spot on as you want it to. So this is pretty much, this is 95% of the work. We've now got the, uh, the, the uncharred coffee bean. There's a little bit of charring on the edge still from the other one, but I really like that because of course it is on fire. So there should be a little bit of charring. I don't want it to be a completely untouched coffee bean. Um, so I think this is a really nice balance, uh, but we've also got that flame. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer and we're gonna to go to filter, camera raw filter. This brings up the exact same tools we'd have got in Lightroom. You know what? I can pop my light back on so you can see me again. Um, and I'm gonna start playing around with some of the uh, exposure tools just to try and control that flame a little bit because um, I'm gonna bring the highlights down but up the whites. Um, I'm gonna leave things like clarity alone for now. Maybe I'm just gonna up that exposure but I'm gonna go down into the color mixer because of course this is where uh, we're gonna be able to do most of the work, particularly the yellows. Um, as you can see, we've got a big sort of yellow hotspot in the middle of the flame. And I actually really like to emphasize that because if it was a bit too low, that flame just looks a little bit flat. And I know that's kind of silly talking about 3D form with a flame, but I do like that we get this almost extra like sense of heat i think by increasing the um by increasing the yellows in the middle there um the rest of it will all be in orange so we don't want to play around with that too much because as you can see we pull it too dark it looks weird it goes too bright it just looks overexposed it looks like we haven't got our camera settings um set properly so i can probably stand to raise it a little bit maybe just plus five might even bring that hue down make it a slightly more uh deeper orange flame and we could also probably stand to punch up the exposure just a little bit. Uh, but the other thing I'm gonna do is uh, apply a brush and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna firstly apply it without any effect to the bean. And I'm going to increase our exposure. And as we do, what we can see is that I'm being able to now just edit the coffee bean itself, independently of the flame, independently of the rest of the image. This is all we're touching. So I can increase those shadows just a little bit. You don't wanna to go too far because we've created shadow with the direction of the light. So I don't wanna try and undo that by using um, uh, by using the shadow tool here. Um, but definitely I think I wanna have a look at what adding some clarity would do here because I really think, and yeah, brings out so much of that definition. Um, but this is pretty much everything that I would want to do, um, I think, with this image. If I press OK, and then we can see the before and after of what that's doing, I absolutely love how this looks. The coffee bean looks amazing. The light that we put on there brings out all of that detail, all of that texture, the ridges, the central line going through it absolutely looks amazing we've got real flames this isn't something we've added in by just finding pictures of flames on google and photoshopping it in we have put that flame there on that exact bean um so i really really like how this looks um, the only other things i would do is do a little bit of cleanup because i've got a dirty sensor which is poor form uh, and there are dust spots all over that we can see um but to be honest most of the image is black, you really can't see it. So it's really only the ones uh, on the flame itself. Uh, I might even just sort of retouch a couple of little spots on this bean. But for the most part, the point is, is it's a roasted coffee bean. So these big cracks, this uh, sort of husk in the middle, that's all staying because that's the point. So I think that is the finished image and I'm really, really pleased. It's been such a fun project. I like photographing coffee beans anyway and playing with this little bit of fire really was good fun. So I think that brings me to an end of this video. I really hope that it's been one that you've enjoyed watching and, and maybe it's given you some inspiration of things you want to do yourself. Uh, if you do want to do this yourself, as I said, please be careful playing with fire, playing with, with flammable materials like this. It 
can be dangerous and things can go wrong. So make sure that you're taking every single precaution that you can be safe and enjoy the process. Uh, if you do give it a go and you get some good results, please make sure to find me on Instagram with at batteryhq and show me uh, what you've done and pop some thoughts on this video in the comments below. And finally, of course, if you have enjoyed the video, do please hit that like button and certainly consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.